This video is the assembly guide to these flintlock blasters. Check out the linked video for a more general explanation, and the video description below has the link to the files and a print guide. I'll be explaining how to assemble all three variants, but let's do the pistol first. It's the basis for the rest of these anyway. Let's look at the tools we'll need to complete this project. You can also use a file and a pair of snippers. You'll need these to trim any rough edges or clean up any brims from your print. And finally, some super glue. You don't really need this to complete the build, but it's handy if you intend to be really rough with it or you want to keep some of the more delicate parts in place. This is the hardware you will need. First up, we have M5 screws. You can get these from Home Depot or from McMaster Car or wherever. Now the quantities I'm about to show you are for the pistol size build. For the axe, the full length musket, I'll show you where you need some extra ones, but they're the same kinds as these. So these are slot head screws. You can use whatever, but I think these look prettier. These ones are 10 millimeter. You'll need six of those. You'll also need five 20 millimeter screws and five 30 millimeter screws. And finally, two 60 millimeter screws. You'll also need one two centimeter by one centimeter spring. If you can't find one in a hardware store like this, you can use one from a clicky pen like I did with my other designs. You'll also need some filament pins, by which I mean just some filament from your printer, standard size, any color you want. Finally, you'll need some elastic bands. I'm using four number 32 bands. You can get these at any office supply store. They're very standard sizes. You can use other bands, but I like using these. Let's get building and be prepared for much worse audio. All right, the first step is going to be connecting the stock grip and the stock mid piece together. It's important to get this right because this is core to the strength of the blaster. So first step is gonna be filing down this to make sure it's flat. These two surfaces are gonna meet. I've already done that a little bit. Depending on your printer, it might turn out fine off the bed. And the way to test if it's fitting correctly is you take this stock ring, and make sure those two fit flush. If they don't, make sure to sand that flat, maybe clean up these edges. Same on this side. This M5 times 30 millimeter screw will be enough to hold them together, but if you're making a sort of longer stocked thing like the one that comes for the ax pistol or the musket shoulder stock, these are a bit heavier um, you're going to put more sort of force on them and they're longer. So it's probably better to put some glue around the inside of the joint as well. I haven't managed to break one, but you never know. Okay, so let's put these together. So drop that screw. Again, this is 30 millimeters, that screw. I'm going to take this. Now, if you are going to apply glue, and you know what, just to demonstrate it might as well, probably want to put it on the face like so and just a teensy dab in here on the sides make sure it's small because you don't want it to leak out the sides of the join carefully like so we take our flathead screwdriver I'm going to screw it in until it feels like it's almost going to break the plastic. Almost. Ah, that's stuck in there. Great. Then we have the stock grip. Okay, we'll now assemble the grip. So we'll need the butt plate, the silver ring joiner, and the ring. One 20 millimeter screw and two 30 millimeter screws. And that should all just go on our ring holder. On the 30 millimeter screw. Next 30 millimeter screw. Boop. So once those two are solidly on, do the next part, which is the stock ring. Gonna insert you like so. Put it whichever way you like. If you want the screw facing out or inboard for out. Maybe just 
Make sure it's a little loose so it rotates freely. Nice. Cool. That's the grip. Okay, we can now do the trigger and catch assembly. For that, we'll need the trigger guard, the trigger, the catch sear, and the catch block. Uh, in terms of hardware, we have one 10 millimeter screw, one 30 millimeter screw, and two 20 millimeter screws, and our spring. So let's start with the trigger. So that should align to that second hole there. Take our 20 millimeter screw. Now you don't need to be completely tight for this. You want this to still rotate pretty freely. And we'll do catch, sear, and block. They go in like so. Probably worth getting the spring that's gonna sit just, sorry if that's hard to see on the camera, inserts just under there. It looks a little loose, but once the barrel's in, that'll hold it secure. But for now, all we need to do is take a 20 meter screw, 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter screw, and jam it in here. Cool. Good. That leaves the trigger guard, which we'll start with this 30 millimeter screw at the back, back here. And then you take the 10 millimeter screw and put that through the forward hole. And that'll give us the entire back stock of our blaster. Let's do the barrel next. Okay, let's assemble the barrel. To do that, we'll need the barrel base, barrel body, a muzzle with whatever color you want, the rail top piece, you see it marked as such, the rail bottom piece, rail head, those are where the elastic bands are gonna pull from, probably print that with higher specs, again, see the notes. Two to four, uh, number 32 elastic rubber bands, some filament pins, which we'll need some snippers to cut, and this barrel tang piece, which is gonna go back here. For the record, you'll also see files in the set for some smaller sleds. Uh, don't worry about these too much. This is for if you just want to use Nerf darts, it won't work with the rival bulls. And this is if you want to be able to push a short dart down. Don't, don't use this, it's a dumb idea. Just use either the one with the post snipped off or this. Okay, let's assemble the rails first. So, I'm gonna probably want to take the rail head, two pieces, and these are going to screw into there. To do that, remember to align top to the top of the barrel base. There you go, make sure it's aligned like so, and then turn. Just about ends up solid. Cool, that looks good. We can then put in our filament pins. So you don't absolutely need these, but I prefer to keep things secure when you're opening and closing it, so. But it does make it harder to change out the rubber bands. So let's do that. Cool, and then we have a solid core assembly there. Take your four rubber bands and your sled, you're gonna insert that like that. Make sure this part that, that's gonna hit the catch is facing towards these three holes here. So put it in like so.
a couple different ways to do this. I prefer to just kind of bunch up my bands like that in the hole like so. And they are good to go like that. And then you want to use your thumb and your forefinger, whichever the forefinger is, I don't know. Kind of hold the bands in like that. Then you take your barrel, make sure the holes are facing down, and slide it on top. The idea being you want these rubber bands to not You're gonna take the make sure the hole. So you're gonna then take the barrel body, make sure this hole is facing down, and just kind of slide it over there, making sure that the rubber bands are not slipping down the sides. Once you're confident in that, give it a half turn, and that looks to be good. You can jam on. This guy. Another half turn. And that looks good. Oh, of course, the tang, that just slides on like so. If you're having trouble with that, make sure you clear that channel as much as you can with the file. There's our barrel. Once we have the barrel assembly, and the core of the stock, we can add the four stock and this side plate, along with two M5 10 millimeter and one 60 millimeter and one 30 millimeter screw to bring the whole thing together. Uh, keep in mind, in addition to this side plate, there's also one with a integrated belt clip I've installed on this axe one. You could also use that instead. I'm gonna take four stock and barrel, Flip this all over. And it should just slot in like so. So once that's all in one piece, first we take this 30 millimeter screw. We're gonna secure the base of the barrel in there. Actually, I'm gonna cheat. Yep, saving time. Uh, cool, that's secure. We'll do the same on this side, but now this side plate, take the 60 millimeter screw, put that through there. Now, don't screw this in all the way because we're gonna need that for the plate later, but then take a 10 millimeter one, and screw this one in all the way. That's uh, just to secure the plate. Then take finally this guy, 10 millimeter, use that, secure a tang. Nice. Let's get the ramrod, the ramrod assembly. For that, you'll need this short ramrod, ramrod head, little cap. The two ramrod guides, back and front. Two slightly longer filament pins, some snippers to trim them, and if you want glue. First off, let's add the ramrod guides. So you can see there's a little sort of slot that should just pop into without effort. And the guide goes in there. So that should just be like so. And it should have a little bit of tension in it so it doesn't wobble. That said, feel free to add glue just in that divot there on both if you found it's a bit loose or you're just worried about it ripping off during play. That said, it's pretty tough. Do the same for this one. Should fit about flush. Take that filament pin. Thread that through. All right. 
take our ramrod and you can just shove that straight on. It's pretty sturdy once it's on there. I haven't felt the need to add anything else. If you want, again, glue if you're gonna think you're gonna really rough play with it, but it's pretty strong. And that's just with PLA. Insert that through there. And that gives us most of the working blaster. The last part of the pistol build is gonna be the footlock plate. Okay, step one of assembling the footlock plate. Free screws, so two 10 millimeter, one 20 millimeter, the frizzen, the pan, frizzen spring, the lock plate, the mainspring, our tumbler, our bridle for the sear spring, and the sear itself. And the sear has a little second part as well. First, let's assemble the pan. So that goes in like so. And take the mainspring. See this section here? It's gonna slot in like so. Pan goes on top. Take the 20 millimeter screw. Make sure that's rotating relatively freely. We're gonna put that through there. All right, and then once you have that assembly, make sure that's flapping loosely. Take the frizzing spring, should just slot in like there. It's got a little notch to prevent it moving about too much. You may want to glue this in place if it becomes loose, but its design should prevent that from happening too much. Screw it in quite tight, and that should be pretty solid. You know it's working when a little tap puts that into those two positions and it doesn't flop about when you shake it. Cool. Now let's flip it back over. So we're going to do the sear and tumbler parts. So first up we take the sort of sear part B and we just slide that in there. Get your home. Come on. Once that's in, now that's going to prevent this from snapping while still being rigid because it's got that shell. Take the bridle piece, should go like that. The sear spring goes on that portion. And finally, tumbler. Just make sure it's at the bottom. And then insert all that there. Should fit pretty snug. On that down, grab your 10 millimeter screw. Perfect. Okay, so obviously we're missing one more part, the hammer. So there's a lot of small details here, so you'll probably need some glue to keep it all together. We'll need a screwdriver, our snippers for the filament pins, and our file in case there's anything loose. I think I've already done that for this part, and one 20 millimeter screw. And all that's gonna help put together our main hammer piece. This is a little hammer part B, our tumbler key, our flint, the operator hammer jaw, the jaw screw, part A, and its cap, part B. Okay, let's get started. First off, let's connect these two. So you want to make sure both these holes are nice and clear. We're going to take our jaw screw and make sure that slots in to here. Take our jaw screw. That should just kind of just tightly slot in there. We'll probably have a rough underside, just make that facing inwards because we want the pretty side facing out. Take the upper part of the jewel. We're going to put two filament pins there.
use that as a pair of pliers. Okay. Take some glue. Little dabs alongside the pins. So that's going to help this hold in place. Slots on top of those two. Then, you need to secure it with the little dovetail at the bottom of the flint. Is this realistic? No, it's not meant to be. But it holds a hell of a lot better than my previous design. A little bit of glue to secure that. And I'll probably give the glue a little bit of a chance to dry just to secure it, but when you're confident it's solid, snip out the excess from those two pins. Uh, this one I didn't join quite perfectly. Again, you can fix that with a file, but only before you glue it, unlike what I've done. Cool. Just want to clean that hole out so we can get a pin for there later. Nice. Okay. So once the bottom part is secure, Maybe just dab a teeny bit of glue there. Chuck that on. Finally, put you on top. And you know what? We're going to add even more glue just while we're at it. Make sure that hole lines up because that should hold pretty tight. Should go through now. There we go. Just press that a little. Cool. So yeah. Obviously, this is now all stuck together. You can't unscrew it. It doesn't even have a screw component anymore, but it's a hell of a lot prettier and sturdier than my old design. Cool. Once you have all that together, and by the way, you can do it without the glue. The filament pins will hold it together, just not nearly as well. I'm going to take our tumbler key. Should slot through like that. Take our 20 millimeter screw. Should just go straight through. And this part's important. Make sure if the tumbler's facing all the way down, make sure this aligns such that. Now, these should be relatively low friction so that that happens. Perfect. Now we add one more screw and the blaster. So we flip that around. So leave a bit of space there so that when we put it back over, we can just. So the plate should sit just about a millimeter into the stock, and you'll be able to see this part is almost flush with the barrel. Okay. So hold that plate down, you should see the screw almost popping out, but not into the front. Cool, so now the screws should be flush. Perfect. Before we finish, there is one last screw. This 10 millimeter screw is gonna go in here to make sure this doesn't get popped off if you knock the barrel. So, that inserts like so. 
Make sure this is rotated in the right direction. That won't rotate out or then it'll be pretty secure. Let's do some tests to confirm everything's working. So, chronograph on. Take the arrivable. That's good. Let's take this short dart. Slightly lower that time. And a standard dog. And confusingly higher than the full length. Great, it's all working. So if you want to assemble the axe version of this, you'll need to print some extra parts. These two pieces of the axe head, which you could also make out of foam and insert here as well. The axe head piece. You won't need the ramrod guides, but you will want to make this sort of longer stock piece. Um, there's no different instructions for this. It assembles the same way this one does. So once you've got everything else assembled, you're gonna take an extra two M10, M5 times 10 millimeter and M5 times 20 millimeter screws. We're going to insert this guy like so. And take one 10 millimeter screw, screw it in on this side. Take the other, screw it in like so. You won't need to screw into the barrel because that's being held in place by this. Grab our muzzle cap, that should just slot on like so. Now you can assemble this with these sort of plastic heads. They go like so. But if for whatever dumb lock reason you actually want to hit people with this, I don't recommend you do. But still, you can take some six millimeter sort of EVA foam, probably get the hardest one you can, put that out. And you could jam that in there instead. I'll apply it that way. Uh, probably do this as the core and then build up something on the sides. Something like that. Not my business. Probably don't hit people with this anyway. It's simultaneously too heavy and too brittle. But assuming we're not doing something dumb, let's just assemble this like normal. Take our two 20 millimeter screws. I'm gonna be extra lazy. All right, you could glue these together if you want, but they're actually pretty sturdy as they are. Like if you print them flat to the bed, they will be perfectly smooth and should just kind of meld with each other. All right, and then finally, you can chuck your ramrod in. Cool. Otherwise, it uses the same barrel assembly and everything else as the pistol. So if you'd like to assemble the longer musket barrel, you'll need a few more parts. So we have a different ramrod, which is in three pieces. So two times ramrod hogs, some barrel stock pieces, a two-piece stock, a three-piece barrel, some longer rails and this much bigger catch. All this can be okay in PLA. Uh, you will need to reuse uh, the rail head, the ramrod cap, and the muzzle that's being used for the other blaster parts. Those screws and rubber bands I've already talked about, but you will need two extra M5 10 millimeter screws. I've also already put the ramrod pipes in there. They're the same as the other ones. I just can't get them off. Cool, let's get building. And we can start with the ramrod. 
To make the ramrod, we'll need glue, some snippers for this filament pen, and this file just so we can make sure everything's nice and clean, as well as this connector piece, two ramrod halves, and this ramrod cap. So, first up, we want to check that these all fit, so this connector is going to go in there. Cool. And we want to check our filament pin goes through the whole length of it. You may need to widen those holes if they've kind of come a little closed. And we're just going to check that that goes all the way through. Cool. Let's add the glue. So easiest is probably just to rim the inside of each side. Now the glue is really just preventing it from shaking around. Strength does actually come from the filament pin, believe it or not. So we're also going to add a little bit in each hole here. Cool. Let's make sure inserting those horns in the right direction. Don't get your fingers stuck to it. Okay, we have a ram roll. Remember to th print this thicker than the several pieces. Then take your cap. Well, we have the glue here. So again, it stays on pretty hard, but a little glue goes a long way. Voila. Make sure you give it a perfectly straight alignment when you glued it, because these two pieces should fit together quite tightly. And that way it will slide nicely through your ramrod holders. Okay, let's assemble the base. So we're gonna take our longer sort of rail sections, should be top and bottom. Now those are actually gonna sit here. Why are they still threaded, you ask? I can't remember, there was a good reason. Yeah. We take the first section of the barrel, the one with the two holes, and that's just gonna slide over like so. You see it should sit into those notches, and then you rotate it back. These will still be loose, but they will now be secure, so let's add our rail head. Alrighty. This will be pretty loosey goosey. Let me take our barrel section. Put some of those two holes aligned. You should see those two holes align there and there. Alright. So that's the first part of that. We'll then take the first section of the barrel and stop, sorry, and slide that in there. Should just fit like so. Again, file away anything that looks like you don't like it. Then take your two extra M5 times 10 screws. We'll now add the muzzle cap. So we take some glue. We're gonna pretty much just glue this section. Don't use too much. You don't really need glue here, but this is good for security. And just to ensure that's aligned correctly, chuck these filament pins in there. Okay, let's put the finishing touches on the barrel. So we'll take our longer catch and our final barrel section, some elastic bands, and this muzzle cap, same one as used on the rest of the designs. We're going to put that in there. Whoa. Very clever. Slippery little one. 
We'll take our red bands, thread those through there. Okay, now this part's a little tricky. Put this last panel piece on, remember to hold rubber bands like so. Make sure that hole is facing down. When you got to that point, it's often a good idea to hold down the bands and that will keep them nice and out of the way. Down here. Cool. Uh, looks like it's all contained. Take our muzzle cap. And voila! We have our front end. Okay, let's put it all together. We've pre sampled midsection, a stock which has been glued at there. We have our lock piece some screws which we should normally have for the rest of the build, so 60, one 60 millimeter to 10 millimeter screws and one 30 millimeter, the ramrod and the barrel we just made. So, as with the upper barrel types, just slot that in there. First take the 60 millimeter screw. around, take our 30 millimeter screw, ten millimeter screw, put that in the tang where it normally goes. Should have checked this first, does the ramrod go in neatly? This is too big for this camera. Perfect. All right. One more screw. Same as before, we're going to secure the barrel with this. Make sure the holes are aligned. Finally, slap on the lock plate. Oh, a musket.